Well, you look around right now, the trees are changing colors, and that can only mean one thing. Fall is here, and in the northern part of the United States, that means big smallmouths are starting to chew up before the hard water hits. And when you get smallmouths this time of year, they start loading up on wintering areas. They can get kind of hard to catch, but with a few unique presentations, you can have a ton of fun and put a lot of fish in the boat. So the first thing you gotta do is you gotta find some fish, or at least the places they might be sitting on. Uh, spend a little time on your electronics. Spend a little time idling. Really, you're looking for big points that come out into the lake with deep water next to them. That's the biggest key. If you got deep water nearby, you're gonna have some fish. For example, we got a big flat here on the right. There's some weeds and gravel, but right now all the bait, whether it's perch or tulabees, ciscos, whatever kind of forage you have, and crayfish are sitting out on these deeper points, and you're just looking for those little hard spots. That's why if you go along and you side image, you can eliminate a lot of time fishing just blindly. So like right now, I'm coming over the top of the point. I can see a couple patches of gravel. So I'm just gonna take my cursor, throw it on top of one pile, throw down a waypoint. There's another little patch of gravel, throw another waypoint. Now I kind of have a visual map on the front GPS as to where those rock piles are. And now I can turn around and make really accurate casts to them. I mean, shoot, you even come off here, I see there's clouds of bait and some pretty good boulders. And that's where you're gonna find big smallmouths. The setup for throwing a jig and wrap is pretty straightforward. Uh, I like a spinning rod just because you got a good drag. This is a 30 pound braided line is my main line. Some guys like monofilament just for a little extra stretch. You run your main line down to a swivel. Uh, that's pretty necessary because when you cast one of these things, it helicopters and tumbles all over the place. I do just a short uh, little piece of fluorocarbon. This is 12 pound. There's some zebra mussels down on these rocks. Uh, I just want a little extra protection when I'm hopping this thing. I go down to a snap clip. Uh, just to make it easier to change colors or put a new one on or whatever. And then you cap it off with a number seven jig and wrap. As far as working this bait goes, I like to make a really long cast. The thing flies like a rock so you can launch it. Let it hit the water, wait until your slack stops sinking. And then from there, once it hits the bottom like it just did, I reel it up, give it a pop. And I like to pretty much get into kind of a little cadence. I've seen people use it and they kind of just pick it up and let it fall to the bottom and pick it up. That's not what you want to do. The whole reason they're eating this is out of, it's a reaction strike. So you want to keep it hopping. Sometimes you can feel it hitting the bottom. And as soon as you feel it hitting the bottom, pick it back up. Be ready for a fish to be on there when you lean into it. You know, So that's when a lot of the times you're going to catch one uh, is when you pull up and then you'll go into them. When you're working it like this, you really want to keep it moving because it's a piece of lead with a bunch of hooks. You know, it doesn't look natural at all. So the faster I can keep that bait hopping off the bottom and going, uh, the more likely a smallmouth, especially because they're so curious, uh, is going to run it down and try to eat it just to find out what the heck that thing is. out there wallowing around. You know, the other nice thing about this bait is, uh, I mean, you can cast it a mile. Like I got the wind coming into my face and I can sit back off these fish aways and keep them, don't do that. I keep the boat off them, keep the sonars from pinging on top of them and continue to make, you know, a really accurate presentation. It's not a good one. So many hooks. Oh my goodness. Just like that. Man, he's got a whole mouthful of jigging wrap. I'm gonna slide over here, get my pliers. Real quick, but I mean that, that's it. It's a pretty straightforward setup. It doesn't look like anything special to bait really, but I mean, small mouse like this all over the north, I mean, even in the south, bass love chewing on them and uh, pick you up a couple jigging wraps, get to catch a smallmouth like this. Let's get her back. <laughs>